Kentucky Proud Park in Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky, as Indiana, out of the Big Ten, will take on the host, Kentucky, out of the SEC. Let's take a look at our bracket, because it's been an interesting regional here in Lexington. Both teams met in the 1-0 game. Indiana won that game 5-3. They were sitting pretty. Kentucky had to go through the loser's bracket. They beat West Virginia yesterday in the first game and then beat Indiana in the second game yesterday night. And here we go, a winner take all game seven. What's up everybody? Alongside my partner, he's Todd Walker from LSU Star and Big League Slugger. I'm John Schriffen. Well, we're on ESPN2, so you know it's a big game. Last night, Kentucky with their backs against the wall just dominated 16 to six. Here in game seven, whatever you did before this doesn't really matter. So how do both teams now reset for this winner take all game? Yeah, Kentucky dominated both games they had to play yesterday to get to today. Can Indiana regroup? They took a beating yesterday from this Wildcat group. I think they can. Ty, Bo Ty Bothwell on the mound for Indiana. He's pretty good. And as for Kentucky, can they keep it going? 26 runs scored in two games yesterday to get to tonight. 10 runs in the first elimination game against West Virginia. 16 runs. How about this offense in the last two games for Kentucky? The first two games, the pitching shut them down, but then they have exploded the last two games here in Lexington. We talk about Indiana. They will give it to Ty Bothwell. He pitched Friday night in relief. He comes back and gets the start here tonight. Well, he's going to have to be accurate early. They need to gain the momentum back. He closed the game out against West Virginia, looked really good. This is a highly emotional kid, so obviously they're hoping he can last. Let's see how far that emotion can take him. We are getting set for first pitch here at Kentucky Proud Park. It is at capacity. It's going to be loud. Who's ready? First pitch is coming up next. all game seven Indiana will be the visitor tonight let's take a look at the lineup for the Hoosiers it'll be Glasser Whalen Taylor Tibbetts and we're gonna highlight the DH Carter Matheson yeah he's had a good tournament Carter Matheson came into this game hitting 317 with 10 home runs Indiana has four guys with double digit home runs Carter Matheson in the middle of this lineup is gonna need to get it done tonight On the mound, getting the start will be Darren Williams. Williams with an inning pitched in this tournament. That was against Indiana. Here's his second appearance. Yeah, he's had some starts for them this year. He's had relief appearances. He's closed out games. He's kind of a chameleon for this Wildcat pitching staff. Seventh year. That's right. Seven years in college. Spent the first five years at Eastern Kentucky. He's going to throw a little bit of everything at this Indiana lineup, uh, including the kitchen sink. Coach Mincione calls Darren their safety blanket. They just feel good when he's on the mound. Kind of like Van Wilder. Remember that movie? That's right. Good call. Yeah, I like that movie. Yeah. Hey, if I could stay in college forever, I would too. <laughs> Getting set for the opening pitch. Darren Williams to Philip Glasser. And we are underway here in Lexington. Glasser fouls that pitch off. 90 mile per hour fastball. Now Glasser's got a habit of jumping that first pitch fastball. Had a leadoff home run in the game against Kentucky the first time they faced in that 1-0 game on the first pitch. But he fouled that one off. I always had a tough with that tough time with that John I let off in the big leagues to start kind of my career with Minnesota and you know the first pitch is going to be a fastball and generally as a hitter if you know what's coming you got to go after it because it's too difficult and I always struggle with that because you make out on the first pitch and you haven't learned anything. So Stays eventually up there I hacking learned. it. <laughs> well so eventually I learned you know not to talk in front of you but also you know to, to take and see some pitches because it sets you up for the rest of the game. Oh, two just missed off the edge. Travis Reininger, our home plate umpire tonight. So Williams regroups on the mound. One ball, two strikes to Glasser. Inside, pulls it foul. You can see the fastball command from Darren Williams already. It's not overpowering, but he's, he's hit the outside corner, came inside right there to Philip Glasser. And when you speed that barrel up, it makes all your off-speed work. Fans are in it early. 
They want the strikeout. The one-two from Williams. Off speed in on the hands. Backhand and it's second by Petre, but he puts it in his pocket, no throw. So an infield single from Philip Glasser to start the game for Indiana. Yeah, Darren Williams lets that slider go a little too hard. Philip Glasser able to sit on the fastball and react to that because of the speed of that slider. It gets a base hit up the middle. Petre did all he could do, but he wasn't going to get the speedy Glasser. Jeff Mercer, head coach for Indiana in his fifth season. His first year, 2019, when he had the club, they were all power. It was big home runs and strikeouts. He said, you know what? It worked this year, but to get to the next level, to be on the national stage consistently, we got to do things differently. We got to get on base. We got to have quality at bats. And I got to start recruiting guys who can do that. And here in his fifth year, he has got a young squad who has the makings of what Jeff Mercer wants to do year after year. The youngest team in the Big Ten. Five of these nine hitters are either freshmen or sophomores. So he's built not only for this year, but for the future. Bobby Whalen, the center fielder. The 0-1 from Williams, breaking ball, stayed on it, fouled it off down the right field line, 0-2. Jeff Mercer told us, he said, I knew eventually we'd have success, but we are way ahead of schedule right now. Picked sixth preseason poll in the Big Ten. And here they are, just one win away from getting to the Super Regionals. And you can imagine how spooky that is. And he even said it. You know, we took our lumps. I mean, I had a lot of sleepless nights because I didn't know if this was really going to work. You try, you, sh you just trust your recruiting process. And guess what? It worked. Whalen battling at the plate in the hole, 0 and 2. He is 3 for 12 so far here in this Lexington Regional. Williams, the pitch. That one fought off in the right center field, and it's going to get down. It'll one-hop the wall. They are waving in Glasser from third. He will score an RBI double for Bobby Whalen, and it's Indiana who strikes first. This is exactly what Indiana needed. They got blown up yesterday by Kentucky, and the first inning was not good for Indiana. So they had to gain the momentum back some way, whether it was their guy on the mound, Ty Bothwell, who hasn't been up there yet, or the starting of two in this lineup, Philip Glasser, the senior, and Bobby Whalen right behind him with a double in the gap. Nobody out. Indiana with already a run in. And here they go. Here's the lefty right fielder, Devin Taylor. Had a sensational freshman year. The Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Can't get on top of that fastball, one on one. Well, Darren Williams trying to keep him from pulling the ball. You don't want to get that, give him an easy path to third base for Whalen with less than two outs. Devin Taylor trying to pull the ball to the right side to get a base hit, but at the very least, move the runner over. Now he goes off speed and Williams, a nice sequence ahead in the count, one and two for Devin Taylor. Three for 10 here in this regional at the plate. He's got two RBI. He's looking to pick up his third here with a runner on at second, nobody out. One, two. Fly ball right side, foul territory. Gillen, the first baseman, will make the catch for the first out of the game. Quality pitch from Darren Williams. Buries that slider on the inner third of the plate. Devin Taylor not able to pull his hands in and get the barrel on it. And just a weak pop, pop fly. Big first out for Kentucky and Darren Williams. So one down now. Brings up the cleanup hitter. First baseman Brock Tibbetts. Dancing at second is Whalen. And you know that's going to get the attention of Williams. Yeah. Tibbetts, the sophomore from New Albany, Ohio. Ten home runs on the season. The 0 one from Darren Williams. Fastball stays outside, 1-1. 
Darren Williams does a great job of keeping these hitters off balance. He can back pitch, he can throw off speed, and hitters counts. You really don't know what's coming or what location he's going to put it in because he can command both sides of the plate. They're going to have a clock violation. So violation on the pitcher Williams. A ball is awarded to the hitter Tibbetts. It's now two balls and a strike. Runner goes. And no chance to get Whalen Steele in third. Williams wasn't paying attention. Whalen had a running start. And Devin Burks behind the plate had no shot. One of the things you pay attention to as a runner is, is his timing and what he's doing. And Darren Williams is given the look. He, he comes set. He looks back to second one time, and then he delivers the pitch. And so Whalen had him timed out. As soon as he looked the one time and went to home plate, he took off. And easy bag for Whalen. Todd, you talked about it in the open, what Indiana needed to do to flush what happened last night and reset for today. It looks like a completely different team taking the field here in this game seven. It really does. And uh, keep in mind, Indiana was the home team last night, so they were on out in the field first. Ben, ben Siler, their, their starting pitcher, went walk, hit by pitch. And, you know, when you start something like that off, it just it just has a negative feel to it. And this, of course, is the opposite. And this is exactly what Indiana needed. 3-1 pitch. Goes breaking ball. Quality pitch by Williams. Count is full. Pitch count getting up there for Williams in his first inning. Here's his 20th pitch. In on the hands, and he went around for strike three. That's filthy. You wouldn't necessarily consider Darren Williams a strikeout pitcher. He's got 57 strikeouts, now 58 in 58 innings. But this is just dirty. As a hitter, you're looking at everything else but that pitch that buries on the inside part. And you talk about an awkward swing, and that's why, because you're just not looking for it. You're thinking it's going to be out over the plate, 3 2. Darren Williams throws that fastball in there with some ride on the inside. That'll bring up the five hole hitter, the sophomore, Carter Matheson, hitting 317 on the season with 10 bombs. Pass ball up and away, one on one. And you can already see with Darren Williams how accurate he is. And what he lacks in velocity, he gains back with, with experience and accuracy. I mean, the fastball inside and out, and then right about the time as a hitter, you're looking for the fastball, and he can drop that slider change up on you. Well, gets his lead at third, the one-two. Got him swinging upstairs. Indiana strands the runner at third, but they do push one across. The Hoosiers take a 1-0 lead over Kentucky. Wildcat bats coming up. We take a look at the batting order for the Kentucky Wildcats. No changes for Kentucky. Gray Felker leading things off, and we highlight Devin Burks. He's got two home runs here in this regional. And why would you change anything? 26 runs yesterday. It's insane. Devin Burks. The kid who Nick Mignon says never has a bad day, the, the captain behind the plate, always smiling, always in a good mood. Uh, not your prototypical three and four holes between Burks and Petre. They don't hit a lot of home runs, but one through nine, this Kentucky lineup really can handle the bat well. They bunt, they're going to steal, they'll hit and run, they'll do all the little things to help them win. Here he is, the lefty reliever who got the save in the opener for Indiana. Gets the ball to start here in game seven. Ty Bothwell. Couple veterans on the mound. Darren Williams for Kentucky and fifth year senior Ty Bothwell for Indiana. The left handed throws in the low 90s with the fastball, can cut it away from lefties into righties with the slider. High emotional kid. Watch for the command tonight. He does walk a lot of guys, he's hit some guys, and let's see if he can keep his heartbeat under control early in this game. Jackson Gray, the center fielder, leads it off. Lefty lefty matchup. Low for ball one. If you're new to Kentucky baseball, 
They will stand in there and get plunked. 21 hitters have been hit by a pitch. This regional for Kentucky. Gray lifts it out to right field, drops in for a single. And Jackson Gray, he is on track now. Leads off this bottom of the first with a hit. Yeah, Jackson Gray had been 0 for 11 in this tournament until he hit the 28 hopper to third base and beat it out for a base hit. Now he's starting to feel a little better about himself. That's the third hit since then. And a good way to start for the Cats. You said it. Gray started 0 for 11 in the regional ever since. He is 3 for 4. They check on him over at first. Yeah, they throw over, but they're also trying to figure out if Felker's going to show him anything, whether or not he's going to bunt. And Felker did turn around almost late as if to kind of fake the fact that he's going to bunt. Jace Felker shows bunt, pulls it back for strike one. The senior from Princeton, Kentucky, batting over 300 on the season. Does bunt it, pops it up foul, and the count's 0-2. So he did square around early enough. That's the first thing for me when you're going to bunt. Square around early, give yourself some time. But the second thing is keep that barrel at an angle so you don't pop it up in the air. Too many times these college kids keep it straight and you end up popping it up. And then lastly, keep your eyes behind the barrel. A snap throw to first. Bothwell on Friday threw three and a third. Gave up two hits and a run to West Virginia to get in the save. Here's his 0-2. Tell you, Kentucky hitters, they're not moving off the plate. <laughs> 21 <laughs> players hit by a pitch. Nine batters got hit last night in the game against Indiana. Nine times. Yeah, but that's still a quality pitch by Bothwell. Throw it in 0-2. As a hitter now, you think you got to get the barrel out on that pitch, and he's proven that he's going to throw in there, so you kind of think he might do it again. And when you when you try to get the barrel out early, that's when he drops the slider on you, and you swing and miss. The one-two. Missed outside with the fastball. Counts even at two and two. Maybe not the most sanitary routine for Bothwell between pitches, but that's what he does. 2-2. Two -two. Was, was that a little Ferris Bueller's Day Off reference? Nine times. Now you put the runner in motion. 3-2, predictable fastball count. As long as you can trust that Felker's not going to swing through it and he knows what's coming. Uh, and... With the lefty on the mound for Jackson Gray, he can't leave early. You gotta literally, you're not trying to steal the bag here. You wait till he literally lets the ball go toward home plate, and then you take off just to stay out of the double play. And if it's hitting the gap, you can score easy. Count is full on Felker, and they check on Gray again. Here's the 3 2. You know, Todd, we're only in the first inning, and you can feel the intensity. Every pitch, guys are taking their time, making sure they know exactly what they want to do. You don't want to end your season here tonight. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming. And he lost him. Ball four. The greater bat by Jace Felker. I don't understand the 3 2 off speed pitch when you're already in trouble. And, uh, you know, we've lost the art of the fact that if, if a hitter's successful 30% of the time, he's doing great. Now, college might be a little more than that 35%. 65% of the time, he's pumping right down the middle. They're going to either hit it at somebody or make out. And so I think we've kind of lost fact, that fact. And you end up throwing 3 2 off speeds. I've seen a lot of that this year. And you just get yourself in trouble. Burke squares around, pulls it back for ball one. Dangerous hitter at the plate, the catcher for Kentucky, Devin Burks. A solo home run in the opening game for Kentucky. 
Another home run in the win yesterday against Indiana. And this is what we talked about. How many how many three hole hitters in the first inning are going to be asked to bunt? And not only is he has to do it, but Devin Burks wants to do it. So the offense so they play got Baby Shark on 2 0 with their up in the fastball. And now you get the Jaws theme on 3 0. The crowd is going nuts here in this first inning. It certainly does feel like you're in the ocean with nowhere to go. Because right now, for Ty Bothwell, we talked about this. The offense got the little bit of the momentum back. Ty Bothwell needed to come out here and throw strikes. He did that. Jackson Gray hurt him with the base hit. And he's kind of lost his composure since then. The 3 2 slider uh, ends up walking Jace Felker. And now you're in a little bit of trouble. Devin Burks is going to give you an out. He's going to put the ball down if you throw a strike, but he just couldn't do it. And now, if you're Kentucky, you make him throw two strikes in a row. I'm taking 3 0 and 3 1. And then 3 2, he's got to throw a fastball in there. So let's see what Burks decides to do with this 3 0. Nobody out here in the bottom of the first. Taking all the way, and it's ball four. Back to back walks, bases loaded for the cleanup hitter, Emilian Petre. Yeah, Emilian Petre is their cleanup hitter. One home run on the year. So this Kentucky lineup as a whole, 51 home runs on the year, and that's compared to a, a Florida, for example, has got 125 or something crazy like that. So they're not going to necessarily blast you out of the park. They just do this. They get on base. I mean, as a team, their on base percentage is 42% as a team. And they just, they just, little by little, they just cut you. And all of a sudden, Ty Bothwell is having trouble finding the strike zone. Four straight balls to Burks, two straight balls now to Petre. Here's the 2 0. With the bases loaded, the Kentucky second baseman, Emilian Petre, is 5 for 11 this season. Laces that one to center. Whalen will make the catch. Tagging and scoring from third is Gray. The throw. So an RBI for Petre as Gray scores. And we're all tied at one apiece here in the bottom of the first. Great base runner by Jace Felker. You have got to get over to third base with less than two outs right there. He does that. And for the hitters, it's a little less difficult now. You want to keep the ball up. Don't hit the ball on the ground and, and get to a double play. Get the ball up, create a little angle on your bat, put it in the outfield. But this was the least difficult at bat that I felt like you would have as a hitter with a gallon third. You really basically just have to put the ball in play for that second run. Hunter Gillum had a three-run home run last night. Got to be careful with him. Starts him off on the corner for strike one. First and third, one out, all tied at one apiece here in the first. Big swing from Gillum, fouls that one off. Came in on him. Fly ball to right. Taylor drifting back will make the catch. Tagging from third is Felker. He will score as the throw comes into second. Great base running for Jace Felker as Kentucky takes a two to one lead here in the first. So when Indiana had the gallon second, they couldn't get him over and they don't score that run. Kentucky does, and that's the difference in the game. Getting the guy over to third, less than two outs. This first inning is exactly. Kentucky's identity base hit walk walk and two sack flies Kentucky leads it two to one back to back sack fly RBIs for Kentucky brings up the DH Ruben Church Church swings at the first pitch and that one will get into the seats look at that sea of blue out there today 
Yeah, they're excited. I would be too if I was a Kentucky fan. Indiana is equally excited. It's a big game. For some of these kids, it'll be the last game they play. Oh, one got him out in front off that off speed pitch. Nick Mingio called on Big Blue Nation to show up tonight, and boy, did they ever. 0 oh, 2. Pitch count for Bothwell getting up. 23 pitches here in this first inning. Trying to get out of it here. But Church keeps battling behind 0 2. Throughout the Church rest of this at bat, Ty Bothwell does not have to split the plate, give up that third run. It's got first base open, does have two outs. Seven holes, Wall Schmidt behind him, and that's a nice pitch. Got him swinging all the breaking ball. So Bothwell does get out of the inning, but Kentucky picks up two as the Wildcats with a two to one lead over Indiana after one. Welcome back, John Triff and Todd Walker here. Game seven of this Lexington Regional. Waiting to see who will punch their ticket here in Lexington. But let's get you caught up. Who is already into the Super Regional round? Todd, a bunch of national seeds, but also some names left off that list because we've got some upsets, some teams heading to the Supers. TCU has been unbelievable over the last few weeks. I mean, they are playing football out there. Every, I mean, every time you look up, they've scored 12 or more runs. They, they ran through that Fayetteville Regional. Uh, I mean, there's some really nice teams there. I really still like, still like Tennessee. I think they're set up to win it this year. And but there's a lot of great, great teams there. The Super Regional will be a lot of fun next weekend. Six, seven, eight coming up to the plate. Josh Pine, the sophomore, leads things off. I want to get your impression against Oral Roberts after this at bat because there's a team who maybe people on the national stage may not know much about. Pine. Ground on the left side, and that one's off the diving glove of Felker at third. Pine will lead off this second inning with a single. We already saw Pine make some unbelievable plays last last night at third base, and this kid's doing it offensively too to get some started. All right, we yeah, take a look at the list again for the Super Regional. Oral Roberts, what's their story? How how about them put, getting put in the Oklahoma State, the Stillwater Regional, as a four seed? They've won 49 games this year already. They're at 324 of the, as a team, 93 home runs. The pitching staff is ridiculous. Uh, uh, an ERA south of four and 560 strikeouts in the on the year. Oral Roberts, uh, I was on a little local radio show earlier this week talking about the surprise team. I thought Oral Roberts was the team that could get it done, and so far they've looked really good. Devin Burks calls timeout, wants to talk to his pitcher Darren Williams with Jesse Hunter, the left fielder, at the plate. The number one overall seed, Wake Forest. Can they end the curse of the number one? Absolutely. I mean, Wake Forest, though, if you go look at their numbers, it's, it's they're off the charts. I mean, they got a, if I say Oral Roberts has a sub four ERA, they've got a sub three ERA as a team. They got three starters, ridiculous. Some bullpen pieces that are, that are uh, dominant. And offensively, they're as good as it gets in the nation as well. So Wake Forest has the full package. Hunter pulls that 2 0 foul. Now, the winner of this game tonight will win this Lexington Regional and will square off against the winner of the. against basically LSU, because LSU has advanced to the Super Regional round. So LSU awaits the winner of our game tonight. Be kind of hostile in Baton Rouge next weekend. Whoever wins this game tonight. LSU number one in the country for most of the year. They've had two legit starters. They're looking for their third starter. The offense is ridiculously good and uh, Riley Cooper had a good outing for them today. He's primarily been in the pen but that's kind of been their issue is who's going to come out of the pen and, and get some outs for them. Three and one the count on Jesse Hunter.
Jesse swings over the top of that one. Three and two the count. Inside ball four. So Hunter Jesse draws himself a walk. And the first two are on board for Indiana here in the second. Have you reached out to the bosses already to see if you can get on the call for the uh, Super Regionals in uh, LSU? I would, I would love uh, that one. That one's going to be electric. But I think anywhere in the country, it's going to be special for all these kids, you know, to get an opportunity to play in a super regional. Um, a lot of high level talent, uh, not only this weekend, but of course next weekend with the opportunity to get to Omaha. Tyler Cerny sends this one into right field, gets a single. They're going to hold the runner at third. So the bases are loaded here in this top of the second. Nobody out for Cerny. This is his first game back since serving the suspension yesterday. He was suspended because he brought a celebration chain onto the field, which according to the NCAA rules, not allowed. He was ejected from the game, suspended the next day, and here he is in his first at bat gets a single. Yeah, I'm glad you, did, you explained that. I didn't want people to think that he gave somebody a haymaker and got suspended. He, he brought their crimson chain, the home run chain, out of the dugout a few steps uh, on a huge home run for Indiana when they beat Kentucky in that 1-0 game and was suspended yesterday. How about his replacement yesterday? Evan Goforth, his first at-bat, Evan Goforth, hit a solo home run, also had a, an RBI double. So go forth not getting the start tonight with Cerny back. That's a tough lineup to crack, right? Two for four with a home run, and he can't get in there. But I know that was a tough decision for Jeff, Jeff Mercer. Peter Ceruto, he was the hero for Indiana when Kentucky and Indiana met the first game here. A three-run home run. That would prove to be the go-ahead shot for Indiana as they took that game five to three. One ball, one strike to count. Inside, off the plate, two and one. And it was on that home run by Ceruto that Cerny actually brought that celebration chain out of the dugout and caused him to get ejected and suspended. Two one from Williams. Pulled on the left side. Backing up at third, coming home, getting the force out. Nice play by Felker. There's the first out here in this top of the second. And a smart play by Felker. He was playing back. I'm not sure he could have thrown it to second, turned the double play. And he saw the runner stumble and not really go. So an easy first out. And you don't give up the run. And it looked like he might have had a tough time with, yeah, he kind of, I mean, he caught it, but not cleanly. And it wasn't going to be quick enough to turn the double play, so they get the lead out. So the lineup will turn over, top of the lineup for the Hoosiers. Look, Glasser led this game off with a single and scored. Fastball stays up for ball one. First time through the lineup, Indiana, four hits off of Darren Williams. Bases loaded, one out. Two balls and a strike to count to the shortstop, Glasser. And Williams keeps rising the ladder, going up. Gets the swing and the miss, 2-2. Yeah, that's where you can get some swing and misses without that high-velocity fastball. As a hitter, you throw it up in my eyes, it looks really good, but it's too hard to catch up to. He went up there again, but Glasser fought it off. I'm not sure Williams has thrown a strike yet to Glasser this at bat. 
but he's in swing mode and Darren Williams is aware of that and so why would you just throw it around the zone maybe you get a swing and miss. And you certainly don't want to go to three and two. But this is the count and I love two two fastballs because there's still a little bit of doubt in the hitter's mind as to what you're going to throw if he gets to three and two now the doubt goes away you know it's a fastball especially with the bases loaded but in swing mode if he can bury something down in the ground he might get the swing and miss and that'd be a huge second out for Kentucky seventh pitch of the at bat the two two from Williams. All right, so he's been trying to elevate the fastball. Now that it's three and two, what would you expect at the plate? It's still early in this game, and it's a it's a tight game. I would I would think he might throw something off speed here. Three two, breaking ball, and Glasser stays alive. Only because Darren Williams is so good at it. Most pitchers can't pull that off. They just got to pump the fastball in there and pray. But for Darren Williams, I mean, he can throw you any pitch. We talked about in the open about him throwing the kitchen sink. And as a hitter, you know that. So you got to be staying back, even at three and two, and be ready for anything. Three two, grounded to second base. Petre one over at second, over to first, not in time. Glasser beats it out, and the run will score from third. So Indiana will tie this ball game at two apiece here in the second. That was a sick play by Petre. Not only to grab it, but to make the turn and an accurate throw over to Grant Smith. We know how, Grant, how good Grant Smith is at short. Only made three errors on the year. And he did all he could do as quick as he could to get it over to first. And Phil Glass was just too fast. So a fielder's choice RBI for Glasser. As Jesse comes in to score. Cerny moves to third. Glasser's on at first. First and third now, two outs, and Nick Mingio had a word with the home plate umpire, Travis Raininger. And now he's going to call his crew together and talk about something here. Well, I don't think it can be about the play at first base. Glasser was by the bag before the ball got there. They're going to take a look anyway, and I, I can't imagine that's what it's about. They obstruct at second base. So no official word what this is about. You know what we need in college baseball? We need the XFL. Like we need a command center. Where when there's an, a replay or a view, we need the officials to tell us exactly what's going on. And so watch, what the, looking at. watch the left arm of Cerruto as he comes into second base, and that's probably what they're looking at. Even though he's sliding semi into the bag, you got to go directly into the bag. He puts his left arm up. Now, that's ticky tacky a little bit, but and the second base umpire Greg Harmon's all over it. But it, it, I don't think it can be about the play at first because he was by the bag by five steps. That left arm by Ceruto coming up as if to somewhat distract Grant Smith might be what they're looking at. But they should announce what they're looking at as they walk, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they should say Correct. That the, the play at first is under review or the play at second is under review. Instead, you and I get to talk about movies we've seen while we're waiting. <laughs> Let's talk about the XFL. Can't, can't, I'm telling you, I, I think the XFL did so many amazing things. It's going to cross <laughs> over into different sports. Can't Buy Me Love. You seen that movie? Yep, got him. So they were, in fact, looking at the slide. They confirmed the out at second, but Glasser's going to be safe at first. So the call stands. It was a challenge by Kentucky, but the call will stand. Yeah, I think they were looking so for Kentucky a loses a challenge there.
With two outs, runners on to first and third. Bobby Whalen, the center fielder, shows bunt and bumps it foul. Yeah, Felker's way back. And that's a pretty smart move. You just got to get it down. And even on a drag bunt, you don't have to be so quick. You know, if the third baseman's back, we used to call it the dirt. It's not the dirt anymore, it's turf. But if he's back behind the bag, you, you have time to square around. If you put a nice bunt down, he's not going to get you, and it scores the run. 50th yeah. pitch from Williams. Fastball stays up, one and one. Whalen, an RBI double on his first at bat and then stole third in the first. Pulls it to the left side, backhanded at third by Felker. And a good scoop at first by Gillum to get the out. Indiana scores one. They tie it up at two. We go to the bottom of the second. All right, let's take a look at the odds. If you win game six, what will happen in game seven? And it really has no bearing. It's basically 50-50. This game is a coin flip. It is anyone's game according to the history here in the NCAA tournament. And after an inning and a half, it's played out that way, 2-2. Two -two. Seven, eight, nine coming to the plate for Kentucky. Ryan Waldschmidt. Left field will step in. You also think about where we are in this regional. We're at game seven. All the pitchers that have been used, we've got both teams starting relievers here today. Clearly the advantage is with the hitters at the plate right now. Well, except I throw in you that shadow between the home plate and the mound is is makes pulls it back to even because that is a tough way to hit. When that ball changes colors and coming in there, uh, it's it's harder to see the baseball. And that shadow will keep moving. We will see that shadow probably for another inning or two as this game goes on. 2-1 to Waldschmidt. Afraid to come inside with a fastball, gets that inside strike. Yeah, and but it's a 3 1 pitch he's got to throw a strike with. I, I, I like the take by Walsh, man, as the leadoff hitter with nobody out. In on the hands again, popped him up in the infield. Class of the shortstop will make the catch for the first out here in the bottom of the second. Make him throw six pitches. You know, 3 two, three one, take the fastball. You generally, whatever pitcher throws 3 1, he's going to throw 3 2. And so you get the fastball with nobody on. Ty Bothwell does not want to walk Wall Smith. So 3 2, you're going to get the same pitch. Good at bat by Wall Smith, even though he popped up. The eight hole hitter, Nola McCarthy. Just does catch the outside corner for strike one. He hit an absolute missile last night. Three run home run in his first at bat for Kentucky. Hard hit again, this time right at the second baseman, Cerny, for the second out. Love Even though that's an out, you can tell Nolan McCarthy, he has seen the ball well right now. Oh, yeah. And love playing defense on this type of turf. You know, 20 years ago, you played on hard dirt, catch a seam on a baseball, you get a lot of bad hops. You don't get a bad hop on this turf. And so it makes you a little more comfortable. You can play a little further back. And Cerny vacuumed that up like it was no problem. Kentucky shortstop Grant Smith at the plate. Take a look at his right ankle. It is heavily taped up. That's because when he slid into home scoring yesterday in last night's game, when he popped up, he awkwardly turned his ankle. He would gut it out. He would play most of the game last night. Eventually, as the game got out of hand, they brought him into the dugout to give him the rest of the game off. But you see the tape over his cleat right there on the right ankle. One one for Bothwell. Stays outside two and one. And Todd, it was impressive watching Grant Smith 
because you could tell he was clearly in some pain, but he was gobbling up every ball that was hit his way at short. And you wouldn't expect anything different. He's only made three errors on the year. I mean, that's off the charts. Good. Nick Benjionis has some really nice short stops since he's been here at Kentucky. Ryan Ritter, a few years ago, who Benjion called the best short stop in the country. And now Grant Smith. I mean, everything within his reach, you're out. Second full count here in this inning as Bothwell gets set to throw his 40th pitch. And Smith will step out. I mean, there was one play last night Smith made, ranging to his left with that bum right ankle, turned a double play, stepped on the bag, and threw it over himself. It was incredible. 3 2, smashes it, center field, but it's caught on the fly by Whalen. A 1 2 3 second inning for Ty Bothwell on the mound. We all tied it two apiece after two. The Lexington Regional Final, John Schriff and Todd Walker on the call. Whoever wins here tonight is going to have to travel to Baton Rouge for the Super Regionals. They'll take on the fifth seed, LSU Tigers. Will it be Kentucky? Will it be Indiana? We move here to the top of the third, all tied at two. Going to have to or going to get to? <laughs> it's gonna be good point. that is good gonna point. be that is gonna be some memories right there playing in that super regional of Baton Rouge. Tim Taylor pulls this one foul. Three, four, five coming to the plate for Indiana. Taylor Tibbetts Matheson. Darren Williams still on there in the starter for Kentucky. All right, I have never been to that stadium in Baton Rouge. I know it holds almost 10,000 fans. What is an experience like at LSU? Yeah. Oh, I think they can get upwards of 12 to 13,000 in that stadium. It is uh, the Cajuns, man. It's uh, if you play for them, you love them, and if you don't, it's the opposite. And uh, luckily, I was lucky and fortunate enough to play in Baton Rouge under Skip Hartman for three years, and it is electric this time of year. And they travel well. You've seen it. I mean, we were at the SEC tournament Hoover last week. A ton of LSU fans there, even when LSU got beat out. But it is one of one of the special places to play in the country. Three-two pitch, fouled off by Taylor. Kentucky fans setting some records this week here at Kentucky Proud Park. As that pitch is fouled. When Kentucky played Indiana in the 1-0 game, they set the record. 6,094 fans, the largest crowd they have ever had here at Kentucky Proud Park. 3-2, lifted into center field, coming in is Gray, and he won't get there. The ball will get past him at center, and Taylor will slide head first in the second. Will lead off with a double. Hello. That was either the sun poking through or a little bit of shadow that Jackson Gray's looking in, lost the ball, didn't know where it was, and, and that one's a tough one because his left fielder cannot pick him up on that play. Here he comes coming in and he'll put his hands up. He didn't know where it is, but nobody can help him there. And probably the only thing he could have done different clearly was to stay in front of the ball like an infielder and block it up. But uh, that's a bad feeling when you can't see. Usually helps when you can see the baseball jump. Tibbetts swings through that fastball for Indiana. They have had the leadoff hitter aboard every single inning so far. Check back the runner at second as Taylor dives back in. And statistically, this is the Hoosiers' best guy, Brock Tibbetts. Hit 360 on the year with the 10 home runs, 17 RBIs, on base 45% of the time. Oh, that ball gets passed in center field. Petre couldn't handle it at second, so Taylor will get a free bag over to third. Don't 
want to be giving away free bags in a game like this. No walks. Clean it up defensively and you know make sure but that was just a mix up there and so he turns around and he, he wasn't quite sure where Petre was going and so Darren Williams kind of you know grabbed it like a change up and, and missed through it. Half swing went around for the strike going to the count so on that throw down to second it was called an E1 against Williams the pitcher. Nobody out, runner on at third. Williams has the sign getting set for the 0-2 pitch. Got him with the breaking ball. So Williams comes back with the strikeout, his third strikeout of the game, one down. That scenario right there is kind of what you were alluding to with Jeff Mercer when he talked about a lot of home runs, a lot of strikeouts. The guy on third, less than two outs. When you have that build of a, of a team, that's what can happen. You just don't put the ball in play. You can't get the runner home. Indiana's built differently right now, but that situation, you have got to put the ball in play. Here's Carter Matheson. Can he drive in the run from third with one out? Popped him up. Devin Birch gets rid of the mask, will make the catch, and there's two down now. Well, clearly things happen. But in the first inning, Indiana had the guy at second, Whalen with nobody out, couldn't get him in. Now the leadoff double by Taylor, and they go strikeout, fly ball to catcher, and two outs now. Darren Williams one out away from saving yet another run. Now up to Josh Pine for Indiana. Pine sends it back up the box and right at the second baseman, Petre. Indiana will strand the runner at third. As Williams works out of the jam, we're all tied up at two. We move to the bottom of the third. Yeah, little man, show those guns for the crowd. A good turnout at Kentucky Proud Park for a great ball game. Indiana, Kentucky, all tied at two apiece here in this winner take all game seven in this Lexington Regional. John Schriff and Todd Walker on the call. This has been an outstanding regional. Kentucky. First two games for them, the bats were kind of silenced as they faced the aces of the teams. But then you get into the bullpen, and the bats have exploded the last two games for Kentucky. Top of the lineup, Jackson Gray. Singled and scored his first time up. Breaking ball by Bothwell, 0-2. Drop down sidearm, but it's fought off by Gray. And that's really effective, especially against a lefty hitter. Because that ball, as a left-hand hitter, that ball's behind you when he starts it out. And creating that angle across the plate. If you try to pull it, that's the best you can do is just a little weak ground ball. Jackson Gray's got to look down the left field line. Mm, what a pitch. Second strikeout for Todd Bothwell. You know, give you an idea just how close knit this Indiana team is. Ty Bothwell in their first game here in this regional got the save. But then after he was done, he actually played some wiffle ball with the youngsters, the kids for the coaches who have made the trip here to Lexington. He must have thrown about 40 pitches to <laughs> some of the young kids just so they could have a good time and enjoy the experience with all the other Hoosiers. Yeah, I love that. And we had that story with Wiffle Ball and Ball State, you know, when they came through here. And uh, we would do that a lot, too. And it just brings the fun back in the game. Ty Bothwell, of course, in his fifth year, uh, you know, is, is in tune with the young kids and, and the community at, at the University of Indiana. There he is. There he is. Now, didn't count against his pitch count because you can see he's thrown underhand. <laughs> so he saved his arm. 
Felker pops this one up. It'll get into the stands. But that just goes to show you the job that Jeff Mercer is doing. It all starts from the top, right? And, and Jeff Mercer preaches family, preaches for each other. And what he has done at Indiana, he's created the foundation. And this is a, a winning program. Guys are transferring in, wanting to be a part of what Jeff Mercer has started. One-two pitch. Got him swinging. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Bothwell. There's the emotion, and now he's feeling it a little bit. Third strikeout tonight, second in a row for Ty Bothwell, and now he's getting his legs out, you know, up under him. I mean, that fastball has got some heat behind it, and it just drills it right by the two-hole, Jace Felker. But I love that you said that, John, because, again, when you're going to preach family and loyalty within a program, you can't go load up on JUCO players and transfer portal guys. And I get it. That's the day and age we live in. But Jeff Mercer will tell you, man, we made a decision, and we're going to go with the guys that chose us first, and we're going to trust our recruiting process, put them out there, and it's worked. Devin Burks, big swing and a miss, strike one. After the first three hitters for Kentucky got on board, Ty Bothwell has now retired the next eight in a row. Two and one the count on Devin Burks. Grounds it to the left side. And that eats up the third baseman pie. No throw for Glasser. It was a hot shot. Let's see how they rule it. It is officially scored an error against Pine at third. Yeah, and, and those balls are hit hard, no doubt about it, but it's got a little top spin on it, too, and off that turf, it's come a little quicker than you're used to, and we've seen Pines make some great plays at third base. Wasn't able to handle that one, and instantly looking at the scouting report for the next hitter. Pete Trey is like greeted with a breaking ball for strike one. I like that, John. I mean, you know, just flush it, keep going. And that's kind of been the theme for Indiana, right, coming into this game. Whatever happened before doesn't affect you moving forward. A foul ball, and it wasn't foul by much. Take a look at this, Todd. It was close. First bounce was, yeah, he hooked it just enough. First and second bounce was fair, and then it goes foul right before it gets to the back. Yo, two. Petre in the first left. inning, drove in the first run for Kentucky with the slack, sack fly RBI. Three strikeouts in the inning for Ty Bothwell. His fourth strikeout of the ball game, Indiana, Kentucky, tied up at two apiece. We will talk to Kentucky head coach Nick Mingione after the break. Rod Park, John Triff, and Todd Walker, please be joined by Kentucky head coach Nick Mingione. And coach, Post game, you ask Big Blue Nation to show up strong, and man, have they ever. What an atmosphere we've got here in Lexington for game seven. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, and this is what the Big Blue Nation does for their their people. And um, I do have, must admit, I took a second when I ran out here in the first just to appreciate it and give the, the Lord all the honor and praise for all these people. Pretty cool deal. Minge, I know you're proud of your group. You lost the 1-0 game. You fight back. 26 runs yesterday. I mean, you've talked about the love you have for these kids. I mean, how, how impressed are you with how they fought back? Oh, yeah. You know, anytime you have your back against the wall. And I just reminded them that, hey, every team could be in this situation in the postseason. And it's about responding and showing up with real toughness and being able to perform at the upper ranges of your talent and skill. And they showed up good for 18 innings. Good luck here in this game seven. Nick Mingione, head coach for Kentucky. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Hunter Jesse with a single to start this top of the fourth inning. And Todd, every single inning, Indiana has had the leadoff hitter on board. And generally when that happens, they score. Uh, Indiana did score in the first inning on the leadoff base hit by Philip Glasser. They've had two guys on second base with nobody out and hadn't, have not been able to get them in. 
Tyler Cerny takes that first pitch, pitch for a ball. Indiana scored one in the first, one in the second, but they stranded a runner at third base with nobody out in the third. But to your point, the key is pressure. If you're doing it every winning, inning, eventually you're going to get those runs in. And you're not going to get them in every time. But so far through four innings now, they've had the leadoff guy on every inning. And they're putting a lot of pressure on Kentucky. Cerny pounds this one in the ground on the left side. High chopper at third for Felker. And he does get Cerny by a step. The NCAA regionals coverage for all 16 sites continues tomorrow on ESPN Plus and ESPN app. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Bottom of the line for Indiana, Peter Cerruto made it to a fielder's choice in the second, 0 for 1. Jesse now at second with one out. Darren Williams has been really effective with that high fastball so far tonight. Well, mainly because he's proven he can throw it in a perfect spot right above the belt. I mean, you're missing higher than that. You're not going to get any swing and misses. And then, you know, the hitters know that you're trying and they won't swing at it. But he's perfect right above the belt. That one is the one I'm talking about. A little higher, doesn't get the swing and miss. But the one right above the belt, again, as a hitter, I, I had a hard time at times laying off those pitches because you're looking fastball, you get it, it's up near your eyes, and it's just it's hard, to, hard to time it up. Breaking ball gets the swing and a miss. Strike three. Fourth strikeout of the game for Darren Williams. And this is what they love about Darren Williams, too, is he gets in a little bit of trouble and he can find a way out of it. Now, he's a veteran. He's been around a while. And those the elevated fastball and the pitch in sequence generally is that slider. After the fastball, you don't get the swing and miss. It's coming back with that. And the hitters for Indiana just aren't picking up the spin. Top of the line for Indiana. Third at bat for Philip Glasser. Laces one to right field. Coming on, sliding, making the catch is McCarthy. So Indiana strands the runner at second. We move to the bottom of the fourth, all tied at two. We'll hear from Jeff Mercer, head coach for Indiana, after this. What a ball game we've got here in game seven of this Lexington Regional. John Tripp and Todd Walker on the call. Kentucky, Indiana tied up at two as we move to the bottom of the fourth inning. Please be joined by Indiana head coach Jeff Mercer. Jeff, each inning for Indiana, you guys have got the leadoff hitter on board. Yeah. Haven't been able to push him across the last two innings. Any different approach you want your guys to take at the plate? Well, we've just got a, we got a really good zone to work with today. We've got to get him in the zone and get pitches we can handle. He's doing a really good job of getting the quadrants in the zones that are his strength, our weakness, up and in, up. Uh, he's just done a really good job of, of managing the strike zone within it. And we've got to get pitches that we can handle and hit balls hard. You know, we've been able to get guys on base. We've got six or seven hits or so, but not able to push them through. So we've done a good job getting there. And after I've tried to manage for the for the bigger inning, and, and it's kind of worked to where we've had opportunities to do that, put up crooked numbers, and haven't done it yet. But super proud of the kids for getting those positions. But you're right, we've got to push through and be able to finish. He went, we got to push through and finish. Those, those innings. And Coach Ty Bothwell, I mean, he started off a little slow, but he's looking yeah. good lately. What have you liked from him? Well, just like most starters, right, you, if you're going to get to him, you got to get to him early. I don't want to jinx him here, but he's done a good job once he kind of finds his groove a little bit. You know, it's a big environment, big stage, and obviously very exciting for everybody and Ty included. So he just, he's got to get adjusted to the zone. Umpire's doing a great job. He's got to get adjusted to the environment and kind of go a little bit. So he's been able to do that for us. Ty's such a great kid, but he's very, very talented. He's able to mix multiple pitches now and multiple slots. So he's been working hard at diversifying his package and he's been able to kind of go a little bit for us here.
Jeff Mercer, head coach for Indiana, congratulations on being in this spot. Good luck tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, after love talking to that guy. Yeah, he's everyone. so polite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's the best. You just, you just all of a sudden walk away and you're in a good mood. One and two the count on the first baseman, Hunter Gillum. Got him looking. Ty Bothwell. He's got some confidence right now on the mound. His fifth strikeout. ESPN is the home for the NCAA College Baseball Regionals for around the clock multi-game coverage. You can scan the QR code below. ESPN Plus subscribers, you can access expanded coverage with squeeze play. And Todd, <laughs> there are some critical game sevens going on around the country tonight. Scan that QR code. Glasser in the hole. Oh, what a play! Backhanded at short, and then Tibbetts applies the tag for the out, two down. That's a different Indiana team than what we saw yesterday, getting beat 16 to 6. I mean, they came back with a little confidence. Whatever Jeff Mercer told them before this game, I mean, they are responding. The offense has been good, and what a play by the shortstop. We already know Ty Bothwell's feeling it with the four strikeouts out of the last six hitters, but to get the defense to work behind you as well, they've really got something now. Bothwell's got confidence on the mound. You can see the guys behind him in the field, they're feeling themselves. Waltschmidt swings through that pitch, it's 0-2. And if he gets this swing and miss here, you're going to see the emotion we talked about with Ty Bothwell. That's just the fifth ball he has thrown in the last inning and two thirds. Five balls. And predominantly fastballs. I mean, he's just not afraid. I mean, it's, you know, it's cutting in on those right handers and away from the lefties. And, and he's just seeing, see, you know, just challenging them. See if he can hit it. night Kentucky with their backs against the wall in the elimination game they pounded Indiana 16 to 6 now Indiana with their backs against the wall they have responded what a ball game we've got so far two to two here in the bottom of the fourth two outs here's the payoff pitch grounded right side Brady to the left Cerny and he makes the play Indiana with momentum right now. We're all tied up after four. Or Kentucky to make it out of Lexington. Well, the night for Darren Williams, the starter, his night is done. Four innings, 75 pitches, gave up two earned runs. Todd, what did you think of Darren Williams tonight? Well, he was good. He's now given his team a chance to win. That's about what you expected from Darren Williams, the four innings. Uh, the six strikeouts and the pitch count was a little high. That's why they turned to this guy, Mason Moore, who's nasty. Moore, his second appearance here in this regional, through five innings of shutout ball, two strikeouts, getting the win over Ball State. And Todd, he was lights out on Friday. Yeah, Travis Smith and Mason Moore combined for the shutout of Ball State in the opener. 93-94, power sink with the slider and just really accurate and pitched really well in the opening night. Waylon Taylor Tibbetts, 2-3-4 coming to the plate. Waylon finds himself quickly in the hole, 0-2. Oh A lot of zeros there, John. Pretty good. 0-2. No Waylon stays on that breaking ball off the glove of the first baseman, Gillum. And that's going to be an infield single for Bobby Whalen. And Todd, we've seen this before. Every single inning, Indiana's had the leadoff hitter on board. Yeah, it's impressive. Bobby Whalen with three hits in his last four at bats going back to yesterday. The double to lead off this game and now a single to the right side. And it's a nice job. Nice way to attack a sinker slider guy. You know, eventually you're going to get that ball out over the plate and away. Bobby Whalen doesn't try to pull it. Just goes with it. Base hit. 
So Jeff Mercer was saying the old pitcher, Darren Williams, is doing a good job keeping the ball up so guys couldn't get anything they could drive to advance the runners. Let's see what they can do against Mason Moore. Devin Taylor, one for two tonight. Check swing foul. And that's a good point. It's going to be the opposite now. Mason Moore does a nice job of keeping the ball low, both with the sinker away from lefties and the slider in. Strike check on the run at first. You know, because the game yesterday got so out of hand between Kentucky and Indiana, neither team really used some of their top arms out of the bullpen, giving guys an extra day of rest to be ready to go here tonight. Grounded to the right side. This could be two. Get one over at second. Throw by Smith to first. Double play turned by Kentucky. That's what Mason Moore does. Induces ground balls, induces double plays. He's going to be a big leaguer in the pen that comes in and, and does exactly that. Gets a hitter to ground into a double play ball. I mean, the ball is all going to be low and moving away from the left handed hitter. And if you're Devin Taylor, you've got to really make sure it's up. Tibbets grounds to third. And Mason Moore makes quick work out of Indiana here in this top of the fifth. Winner will move on. We are all tied at two apiece. We move to the bottom of the fifth. Left to right, one, two, three, four. Uh, well, when we started that, Indiana guy had the lead. Now he's lagging a little bit. Look at Kentucky. About to choke it. Well, Kentucky wins the bouncy horse race. Let's see who takes it on the field. Bottom of the fifth we go. John Schrift and Todd Walker on the call. 8-9-1 coming to the plate for the Wildcats. Nolan McCarthy takes that fastball inside for strike one. McCarthy grounded out to second his first time up. You can see as this game has gone on, he is getting better and better. But he is approaching a season high of 75 pitches. Gets the strikeout. We'll have game three of the NBA Finals Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 Pacific on ABC, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Radio. Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets are in Miami, squaring off against Jimmy Butler in the Heat. Series is tied at one game apiece. Coverage tips off NBA Countdown at 8. Todd, many people thought Denver was going to run over Miami, but the Heat showed up. They moved to Miami. Series tied 1-1. I can tell NBA is not your thing. It's all good. <laughs> I got cut from my seventh grade <laughs> basketball team. It's a sore subject. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> we will move on. I tell you what, though, uh, you know, to win championships, you clearly got to have the talent. You got to stay healthy. But another element of that is having guys do what you don't expect them to do. Ty Bothwell has an ERA north of six, six and a half. Only 27 innings on the year, but he is pitching like an ace right now and coming up big. I mean, look at this fastball. Just hit it if you can. Here it comes. By you. And with each swing and miss, Ty Bothwell is gaining confidence. And Ty Bothwell is now touching on season highs. That's a season high 76 pitches. Also a season high eight strikeouts. One of the best performances of the season. And way to get it done in a game that matters the most. Top of the line of Jackson Gray. And Jeff Mercer's going to ride him out until he just loses it. Uh, but clearly he's hoping this guy can, can carry him deep into this game. And so far he's looked really good. And that hit him. Our first hit by pitch this game as Gray taps his chest. Bob was like, 
that wasn't that much in off the plate. But Kentucky's not moving. 22nd batter hit by a pitch in this regional. That number sounds like you were about to say for the season. 22 batters hit in this regional. Unbelievable. Jace Felker in the two hole. All right, so here's my question, Todd. Why don't more teams do what Kentucky does? Why don't you just stand there, take it, get the free base? I can only speak for myself 20 years ago. We didn't have the armor, right? So I was a left-hand hitter, right-hand thrower. You hit me, I was out of the game, and I didn't want to come out of the game. Number two, I didn't want to get hit and take first. I wanted I wanted to hit it over the fence. I wanted to get four base, bases, not one. And so I was ducking and darting and moving. There are some guys that like to get on base that way. That wasn't me, but uh, I think you're seeing more of that. I mean, Kentucky does it almost as good as anybody. 130 hit by pitches on the year. That's tops in the country. You can also tell this Kentucky team has no egos, right? Like all these guys legit love each other. It is a team unit. They don't care who gets the job done. They just want to get on base and keep the lineup moving. Yeah, and I think there's a little more throwing inside nowadays than there was, you know, 20 years ago. I think I think now they're they're moving inside. Therefore, you're going to get hit by pitch a lot more. Although Craig Biggio for Houston kind of mastered that that art of getting hit, you know, but uh, I just wasn't the guy that was going to sit there and just get crushed every game. I wanted to hit. <laughs> so Gray's on at first with two outs. Felker behind in the count. One ball, two strikes. And even though Ty Bothwell is at a season high 82 pitches, it does not look like he's slowing down anytime soon. Here's the 2 2. No, check on the runner at first. No, and, and that's what you love about this time of year because the adrenaline, all the other stuff factor in. So I don't care what your numbers are. I mean, it, you know, when you have heart like Ty Bothwell showing right here, then none of the numbers matter. And for Jeff Mercer, like you heard him say, we're going to ride him out as long as he can. 2 2, fought off right side, down the line, and the catch is made by Taylor. So Bothwell. He is loving it. The reliever with an incredible start on the mound for Indiana. Yeah, buddy. House at Kentucky Proud Park. The drama continues to build. We move to the top of the sixth inning, all tied at two between Indiana and Kentucky. Winner of this game will move on here in this Lexington Regional and we'll play LSU in the Super Regional Round. John Schriff and Todd Walker on the call. Early on, we thought it was gonna be a slugfest, but both starting pitchers settled in. Mason Moore is now in here for his second inning of relief. Ty Bothwell, the starter for Indiana, still in the game. Seven strikeouts. Grounder, up the middle, what a play at short by Smith. Hey now. He's so good. He had him shaded up the middle anyway. Carter Matheson rips that ball right up over the bag. Let's take another look. And just snags it. Todd, he's so good. <laughs> he is so good. One of the smoothest shortstops in the country with a bum ankle. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, uh, isn't baseball interesting? I mean, uh, Kentucky has one hit. Kind of sounds like Bob Euchre. One hit, that's all we got. But they scored 26 runs yesterday. And so far, I mean, and it didn't start well for Ty Bothwell. And he's been electric lately. And like you mentioned, I, I kind of, it's the game seven of a regional where you're packing all these games within a week. You would think by now it'd be a, you know, it'd be an offensive game, but it's been quite the opposite. Josh Pond in the hole, one, two. Mason Moore quietly still has not given up a hit.
I mean, this is the first batter to see four more pitches. Yeah, not by purpose. I mean, Josh Bond's trying to put it in play, just can't. That ball moves all over the place for Mason Moore. I mean, sinking, diving, darting, slider going away from right handed hitters. Just froze them. Filthy breaking ball. Two down. To me, that's a situation where Josh Pine thinks it might be sinking in on his hands. And once he it, it has a little weird look, it's going out and away, he gives up on it. Thought it might be a little low, probably. But that's a nice pitch for Mason Moore for the second out. So I apologize. Bobby Whalen actually did get a hit in the fifth off of Moore. So Moore has given up just one hit in two appearances here in this in this regional. They did get the double play right away. So Mason Moore has still just faced the minimum. Hunter Jesse will step in with two outs. That's 94 with movement. On the outside corner to left hand hitter. I mean, it's just as a hitter, you really have to stay back and drive that ball the other way. You try to pull it, and you're going to ground out. And then he comes back with a four seamer in at 95. And that's effective. As when you see that inside, you feel like you got to get the barrel to it, and then he goes back away. Well, when wanted Moore it came away. into the game on Friday against Ball State, it was almost like the wind was out of the sails for Ball State, the Cardinals. Five innings of shutout ball did not give a hit. Can he do the same against Indiana? They got a shift to the right side of the infield, a 3-2. Grounded right through that shift. How did that ball get through? Straight up the middle for Hunter Jesse. Take another look here. I mean, literally could not have drawn it up any better. And right out of the reach of Smith and Petre into center field. Two out knock. So Jesse's got himself a two for two day. Back to back hits for him. Walked and scored in the second. Tyler Cerny fouls off that pitch. Strike one. Two outs here in this top of the sixth, all tied at two. Mm. How do you hit that? Well, I think Tyler Cerny is asking the same question. Crowd's loving it. They want the punch out. One, two. Cerny battling, count even at 2-2. And that one gets past Burks. So Jesse will take second. And now a runner in scoring position with two outs. And this is where the decision comes in. He's facing the eight hole, Tyler Cerny. You got a 3-2 count. Cerny's looking fastball, first base open with two outs. You got the nine spot coming up next. Kind of frees Mason Moore up a little bit to drop this slider on him here. So that was ruled a wild pitch by Moore. And Burks wants to talk to his pitcher. And that's what they're they're talking about. Do I throw a slider here or just challenge him with the fastball? And I, I just don't I don't think in a 2-2 game it's worth with two outs. It'd be different in another in another out situation, but uh, to just pump it right down the middle. So he's not overly concerned if he walks him right there. You face the nine hole. So I think right here you get the slider. Went with the slider and got the strikeout. Two strikeouts in the inning for Mason Moore as Indiana strands the runner at second. Yeah, this was 94, sinking straight down in the dirt. Tyler Cerny, how do you hit that? 
I don't know. Mason Moore got him out. Well, the starter comes back out for another inning of work. He has retired 15 of the last 17 he's faced. Only well, getting off with a one hit. Two earned runs, seven strikeouts. He had the two walks, but they were both early in this game. It's been really good. Strike one to the catcher, Devin Burks. Three, four, five coming to the plate for the Wildcats. Just one hit for Kentucky. Third time through the lineup. Todd, what's the adjustment you've got to make now against Ty Bothwell? Well, he's tough because he's giving you different arm angles, different looks. Uh, the ball's kind of darting around when he turns to that three-quarter angle. Uh, he also has the four seamer. He can elevate above the waist. Uh, the slider's working tonight for him. And I, I think, like you see Devin Burke's doing here, you just, you have to be patient. Bothwell likes to work quick. Missing outside and the count runs full. Yeah, it seems like you can get in a plus count if you if you're patient and that's when he'll give you the four seamer and that seems like the most hittable pitch he throws. Big deep breath the payoff pitch. Hammer to left side past the diving pine at third. That'll go into the left field corner. Jesse gets it in. But a stand-up double for Devin Burks to start this sixth inning. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So he gets the hittable pitch, the 3-2 fastball, rips it down the left field line. Pine just out of reach. Devin Burks, the three-hole hitter, gets around a second leadoff double for the Cats, and he turns it into disco night at second base. If you can't have fun playing baseball, I don't know what. Ground to the right side, advances the runner. So Petre gets the out. And Burks is now on third with one out. Yeah, that looked like you, John, on a Tuesday night, man. What a job yeah, on me and the Petre. Vegas, so. hey, yeah, you are in Vegas, that's right. Me and the Petre gets the job done, moves him over. And this seems like this is going to be the difference in the game. Who can manufacture runs? Kentucky's done a better job of that so far. Then has Indiana. We got a long way to go. Did he hold his swing or go around? It is ruled a check swing. So 1 0 the count on Hunter Gillum. Can he push the run across from third? Pulls it left side. That's a fair ball. Burks touches the plate. Kentucky. With a three to two lead, the RBI double for Hunter Gillum. <laughs> and he follows suit. Another double for the Cats in here in the sixth inning. And Ty Bothwell keeps going back to that cutter that's moving into the barrel of the right handers. And they are fired up here at Proud Park. <laughs> Kentucky Proud Park is the place to be in Lexington tonight. <laughs> Listen to this. Jeff Mercer headed out there. Ty Bothwell gave him everything he had tonight. The two cutters into the righties in this inning were the difference, but he was so good. Look at Austin Strickland. That would be me. See, I don't have the dance moves, so. Ty Bothwell has only given up three hits in this game. The first one was the first batter. And now two doubles here in this inning. 
They're going to keep him out there, and he smiles. And they're going to stay it. with him. Ty well, Bob says, oh, my God. Well, and whatever he told him, I love it. You know, and that's how, that's the emotion you should have, right? Make light of the situation, even though it's not looking good. They do have the one out. Ruben Church at the plate. Just don't throw that cutter into writings anymore. Probably what he told him. Ruben Church swings through that 92 mile per hour fastball. One out here in this bottom of the six. Kentucky has taken the lead three to two. Another fastball, strike two. And in. Yeah, he's gone back to the four seam now. Three pitches in a row. Four seamer makes the fastball a little straighter with a little more velocity. Todd, this is fun, man. <laughs> this is a great yeah. time of year. Everything on the line. Bothwell set for the 2-2. Missing outside, it's now full. Took something off of it a little bit, and now, again, I'd be surprised. He, he does have the, the good four-seamer, and he probably comes with it, but you do have first base open. One, one ground ball can get you out of the inning if you miss. And he lost him. From 0-2 to ball four. That's, I don't know, that pitch count's getting up there now. This is in uncharted territory for Ty Bothwell. I, I would imagine that would be it for him. He's done so well. His previous high of the season was 75, up to 97. And Jeff Mercer, he'll make the call to the bullpen for Indiana. Time to pump Tucky. it up in Lexington. They're pumping it up for sure, but what a nice job Ty Bothwell did for Indiana. And gave him all he had. <laughs> and so is, so is he. <laughs> Don't get hurt, young fella. What a job for Ty Bothwell. Gave it everything he had with the season on the line for Indiana. He will hand it off. 97 pitches, only gave up three runs. Kentucky with a 3-2 to two lead will come back after this. Well, Kentucky, and Devin Burke started off with the double. And the dance machine. Then right behind him, Hunter Gillum with the almost identical double and the identical dance. David Burks loves it, so does the Cats. They take a 3-2 lead on the mound now. Braden Reisdorf, sinker slider, numbers are good. He's a strike thrower, only 18 walks and 50 innings. Ryan Waldschmidt will step in, shakes his head no, that's ball one. Braden Reisdorf on the mound through three and two-thirds inning of work on Friday. Gave up four hits, three earned runs against West Virginia. 1-0 is foul. With all the excitement in this inning, it feels like a bigger lead for Kentucky, but this is just a one-run lead right now here in this bottom of the sixth. Walt Schmidt lifts this one to center. With the bat flip at the wall, off the wall. Waylon Fields throws it in. One run will score. Another dance at second for Kentucky. An RBI double for Ryan Walshman. And it's 4-2, to two, Kentucky on top. Could have been worse. Gillum and Church both had to hold up. They didn't know if Whalen in center field could make the catch. He doesn't. 
Clearly, Gillum can score from second base, but Church had to stop at third. This ball carried a long way. Initially, it looks like a fly ball to center field. Both runners tag, and the ball just carries and keeps going. Whalen up against the fence, not able to make the grab. Gillum scores, 4-2 lead for Kentucky, second and third, one out. Third double of the inning for Kentucky. Double by Burks, an RBI double by Gillum, and an RBI double by Waldschmidt. Here's Noah McCarthy. Swings at the first pitch. Popped him up on the infield. Cerny at second makes the catch. There's two down. Big out right there. Big out. Second and third. Again, that situation you put in the outfield. Now you got a three run lead. Instead, pops it straight up on the first pitch. And I always felt like facing sinker slider guys, you had to be more careful. They're not necessarily going to blow it by you and get you to strike out. So you just got to let them throw early. And generally, they make a, a mistake later in the count versus at the beginning. But McCarthy chooses to go early in the second out. Bottom of the lineup, shortstop Grant Smith. Fastball catches the inside corner, strike one. Church is at third, Waldschmidt's at second. Same spot, same result, 0-2. Kind of matching Mason Moore, almost the same pitcher. That power sinker with the slider, 94 miles an hour in on the hands of Grant Smith. And Kentucky will call timeout. Grant Smith will get a reset as he finds himself in the hole 0-2. Dorf getting locked in on the mound trying to get the third out here in the sixth the 0 2 it's a big kid 6 3 230 remember he's only a freshman and coach Jeff Mercer says just like the rest of his group he's doing a little more than they expected to clearly they know he has a lot of talent still developing but he's way ahead of schedule See Peter Cerullo, the catcher, pump his fist behind the plate. The 0-2. What a pitch from Reisdorf. He gets the strikeout. But Kentucky, they take a lead here in the sixth. It's 4-2 after six. Come on back to Lexington after this. Or in big league slugger Todd Walker. Here we are. Game seven of this Lexington Regional. A winner-take-all game seven. Kentucky with a 4-2 lead over Indiana. Winner here will go to Baton Rouge to take on LSU. 9-1-2 coming to the plate for Indiana. Peter Saruta, the catcher, leads things off. Mason Moore, another inning of relief. Two strikes to count on Ceruto. Did he go? No, he did not, says first base umpire Tim Cordell. You know, I like how universally now they they everybody every team seems like they've developed that right there, the two two strike fight. They beat their chest, you know, to make every acknowledge the fact that they're gonna fight with two strikes. Jay Gotro from Mississippi State kind of initiated that. He had it when he was a two-lane playing, and now everybody has kind of adopted that deal where I'm going to get after it with two strikes. I think in this day and age when, like you mentioned, a lot of home runs, a lot of strikeouts. I love the fact that guys are, you know, paying attention to the two strike approach, which is choke up, square out, square up, expand the zone a little bit. Don't let that umpire call anything out on you. 2-2, two -two, Ceruto held his swing again. It's now full.
sixth inning was the first inning. Indiana did not get their leadoff hitter on board. What do they do here in the seventh? A leadoff walk to the nine-hole hitter, Cerruto. What a weekend it has been here in Lexington. They continue to set records. Saturday night, they had the largest crowd, 6,094. Tonight, it's even bigger. 6,796 fans packing into the ballpark here, Kentucky Proud Park. Man, Big Blue Nation showed up and showing out on national TV. Pretty Tom, cool. Not just a basketball school. Yeah. Well, pretty cool what happens when you win. And Nick Mangione has built this since 2017 till now, and it's pretty neat to, to see, they, see them show up. Top of the line at Philip Glasser. I mean, you think about it, NCAA tournament, Indiana, Kentucky, normally that's on the hardwood. But here we are in this Lexington Regional with someone looking to advance to Baton Rouge for the Supers. Sorry, I, I, I apologize for bringing up another basketball reference. I know it's Love a little it. bit yeah, um, yeah, I'm sorry. A little bit of a dagger, I can take it. Love the movie Hoosiers. It was not meant to be a shot. Count, if that counts, does that count? 3-0 on Glasser. Taken all the way for strike one. Fortieth pitch coming up for Mason Moore since coming in to relieve Darren Williams. Slaps the other way, and that one will get through the hole. So the first two reach for Indiana here in the seventh. A single by Philip Glasser, and that's his second hit tonight. Beautiful swing by Philip Glasser. Just the other way, just slap it to the left field. First and second, nobody out. A lot of missed opportunities for Indiana tonight. And starting to get late, top of the seventh. They've got an opportunity again here. One for 13 with runners in scoring position tonight for Indiana. And with that, we will have a mound visit for Kentucky. All right, well, we got a break in the action. Our next 30 for 30 film, The Luckiest Guy in the World. It is a four-part series. The first two parts premiere tomorrow, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. Takes an unprecedented look into the life of Basketball Hall of Famer Bill Walton. Parts three and four next Tuesday at 8 and 9 Eastern. I love these 30 for 30s. I just watched the one on the American Gladiators. That was incredible, incredible. I mean, that was like my childhood growing up, American <laughs> Gladiators. Getting a behind the scenes look, 30 for 30, those docs are incredible. Yes, they are. Indiana threatening here in the top of the seventh, nobody out. Stabbing at it, fouling it off on the bunt attempt is Bobby Whalen. Yeah, that wasn't the best effort to try to bunt the baseball. And you know, I mean, you gotta sell out if you're gonna if you're gonna put it down. He only has one sacrifice on the year. He gets it down back to the pitcher more. His play is to first and he records the out. But Bobby Whalen does his job. The sack bunt. He advances Ceruto to third and Glasser to second. And the best time to do it now through the heart of Indiana's lineup. Devin Taylor, the lefty, then Tibbetts behind him. Second and third for Indiana down by two. You have got to put this ball in play and at least get one run in this inning. Devin Taylor, one for three, doubled in the third. Into a double play his last time up in the fifth. Up and away. Ball one. Young players getting significant playing time for Indiana. How about Devin Taylor? He's your Big Ten freshman of the year, hitting in the three hole. Swings over the top of the breaking ball. It's one and two. 
Yeah, Devin Taylor's a freshman. Tippett's behind him is a sophomore. Matheson behind him is a sophomore. Pines a sophomore. And then Cerny, the freshman, hitting out of the eight spot. A lot of young kids in this lineup. Got him with the breaking ball. Two down here in the seven. This feels like this is going to be the story, John, tonight. I mean, whether you credit Kentucky pitching or the lack of offense from Indiana when they've had golden opportunities, guys at third base with less than two outs, the strikeouts, just not able to put the ball in play in this tight game. Makes a difference. Here's Brock Tibbetts. Indiana now one for 14 with runners in scoring position tonight. Todd, how about this stat? Kentucky, the two pitchers, Williams and Moore, have six strikeouts. Five of them have come with runners in scoring position. These guys are digging down deep when they need to. Elevate to another level, and that's what Indiana needs to do right here. Brock Tibbetts has had a big year. And they need him here. Two out base hits win baseball games. I mean, it's just what they call clutch. Off speed swings through by Tibbetts. 50th pitch from Mason Moore. And he's trying to get out of the jam. One strike away here in this top of the seventh. Grounder, right side. Fielded by Petre. And he got the out. Indiana strands the runners at second and third. What a job by Mason Moore. Four to two, Kentucky on top. It's time to stretch in Lexington. And it's time for the seventh inning stretch. Stand up and sing along. The take me out to the ball game. Moore did an incredible job to get out of that jam with Indiana stranding runners at second and third. Kentucky, a four to two lead. We move to the bottom of the seventh in this winner take all game seven of this Lexington Regional. John Schriff and Todd Walker on the call. And Todd. That felt like a big inning for Indiana. They weren't able to get anything. They've had a few of those innings where they could have scraped across a one run and one by one just has not been able to do it. Kentucky holding on to that two run lead. But give Mason Moore a lot of credit. He did it the other night. He's doing it again tonight. Just throwing strikes, hitting corners and keeping these hitters off balance. Jackson Gray top of the lineup is fourth at bat. One for two tonight. Singleton scored in the first, hit by a pitch in his last at bat in the fifth. Lifts this one out to left, giving chases Jesse towards the line. I lost him. Did he catch it? Wow. Nicely done. Hunter Jesse in foul territory with the grab. One down in the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, that's tough because there's not a whole lot of foul territory over here. We'll get a better look at it here. He's got to keep looking at the wall to see where he's at. And <laughs> it just, oh, wow, karate the wall as he's making that catch. What a nice job by Jesse. He thought he might have to climb the wall. I think that's why he put his feet up and he was a little early, but made the catch. Overran it a little bit, yeah. Wow, Felker actually moved out of the way of that one. 2-0 the count on Jace Felker, the third baseman. Popped him up. Shallow left field. Jesse. Back-to-back -back catches. Two down. Well, we talked about Mason Moore. Braden Reisdorf's doing the same thing. Throwing strikes, power sink. And he's keeping these hitters off balance. And both left-handers, Jackson Gray, the lefty, and Jace Felker, the switch hitter, both hit from the left side just too late on those fastballs. And that's the threat of the slider that makes you do that. 
two down here in this bottom of the seventh. The catcher, Devin Burke, steps in. I mean, you can tell he's the energy guy. He's the life of the party. And he got that big inning started in the sixth inning with a double. Rips this one to the left side, and that's through the hole. A two-out single for Devin Burks, and he is two for three tonight. We got game three of the NBA Finals Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 Pacific on ABC, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Radio. Nikola Jokic and the, and the Nuggets in Miami, squaring off against Jimmy Butler in the Heat. Series is tied at one game apiece. Our coverage tips. NBA countdown at 8 p.m. Eastern. Showing bunt is Petre. Strike one. is up at third base so I don't think you'll see Pete Trey bunt especially with two outs but what it does is create that that hole on the left side and I always love that for left-handed hitters at least show bunt make that third baseman come in and then when you slap it past them it just creates more angles for you to get base hits to the left side of the infield. Swings over the top of the breaking ball. One and two the count on Petre. Slider just makes you late, especially as a left-handed hitter. You've got to respect it, stay back, and that swing you just took at that slider, swung and missed. Now that's all he's really thinking, and that's when you just kind of try to sneak that fastball by him. Laid off the breaking ball, and Burks, he takes second. Devin Burks, the catcher, alert with two outs, now in, in scoring position. Well, what it does is open up the or actually closes up the right side as well because the first baseman had to hold Burks on. Now he gets to second left handed hitter. The first baseman moves back. 2 2. Ninth stolen base of the season for Burks. Taking his lead at second. Petre at the dish. Got him swinging with the breaking ball. So Kentucky strands the runner at second, but the Wildcats hold on to a 4-2 lead over Indiana. The Hoosiers with six outs left. Three more tickets are up for grabs. We got one here in this Lexington Regional. Duke, they're leading right now 11-0. And the Stanford Regional follows up tonight on the West Coast. Stanford, Texas A&M at night. That's going to be a goodie as well. We move here to the top of the eighth. Kentucky with a 4-2 lead over Indiana. John Schriff and Todd Walker on the call. We were all tied up at two. And Kentucky pushed two across in the bottom half of the sixth to take the lead. Carter Matheson. 0 for 3 tonight. Leads things off for the Hoosiers. Pulls to the right side, right at the second baseman, Petre. One out here to start this eighth. The NCAA Super Regional coverage will start on Friday on ESPN Plus and the ESPN app. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. The winner of our game will go on the road to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. LSU awaits the winner of our game here tonight. Todd, what does it take to get a ticket to an LSU postseason baseball game? Do you know how many texts I've gotten already trying to get into that, <laughs> that, that weekend, including my own family? Uh, it is it is a very tough ticket in Baton Rouge this weekend. I'm sure of it. Josh Pond, the third baseman. 
My statistician, Alan Thrifley, knows all about LSU baseball. Tells me the fans buy season tickets just so they have first access to regionals and super regional tickets. It's going to be electric all across the country next weekend. Just a we've little a, low outside, two and two on Pine. And we've had a good weekend this weekend. I mean, crazy some of the upsets and some of the crowds and everything that's going on, including this one here tonight. Pine sticks the bat out. Grounder to second. Petre made the last two plays, two down. In the seventh inning, Indiana had runners on at second and third with just one out. They could not push a run across. And they find themselves down to their final four outs of the season. Hunter Jesse at the plate. Made that great play in the field and left. Well, Indiana's had the leadoff hitter in six of the eight innings. Six of the eight innings, only scored two runs. Huge shift to the right side for Jesse. And that one gets out of play. <laughs> Let's go, nice catch. Todd, they keep getting crowds like this. They're going to have to expand Kentucky Proud Park. 0-2. The delayed strike three call. The first 1-2-3 inning for Kentucky. They take a 4-2 lead into the bottom of the eighth. How about Mason Moore? The job he's been doing. One, two, three in the eighth. The Kentucky Wildcats are three outs away. Game seven of the Lexington Regional. As a four to two lead, we move to the bottom of the eighth. What a scene it has been here at Kentucky Proud Park. John Schriffen, Todd Walker on the call. This is what every atmosphere should be in college baseball. When you get to a game seven, it should be this much fun. Yeah, and Indiana clearly still has a legit chance to win this game, but they, wow, I mean, what an experience. Uh, we've talked about how young they are, and Jeff Mercer, what he's built there at Indiana. I mean, there's a lot to look forward to if you're an Indiana Hoosier fan, and that man right there, I mean, you can't say enough great things about him, the time we've spent, the talks we've had with him. Gillum will strike out to start the safe bottom of the eighth. Let's not forget, Indiana has put up some late runs here in this regional. In their opening game against West Virginia, they put up five runs in the top of the ninth, so they can do it. No, it's far from over. They do have 8 9 1 coming up in the ninth, but Reisdorf has really pitched well and I've given them a chance. Ruben Church 0 for 2 looking for his first hit today walked his last at bat in the sixth. <laughs> Haven't heard baby shark much tonight. Has It'll be ingrained in my head for the next week. Oh, I sang it all night last night. Down on the DH church. And he earns himself a one out walk. And 
So a pinch runner for Ruben Church. It's going to be the sophomore, Patrick Herrera. I don't know who's in charge of the music here at Kentucky Proud Park. But it has been on point. Other than Baby Shark, I am loving every bit of it. <laughs> you don't love Baby Shark? Come on. I mean, it's just too catchy. You know what I mean? Too catchy, yeah. Got reggae, got hip-hop, got country. I mean, they got the mix here in, in Lexington. Ryan Waldschmidt, last time up, an RBI double. Drove in the fourth run of the game for Kentucky. by Reisdorf. Yeah, they're really paying attention to Patrick Herrera. He hasn't stolen a bag all year. One down the bottom of the eighth. Herrera, the pinch runner, gets his lead on it first. And time is called behind the plate by Cerrito. How about the job Cerrito has done? The transfer from Rutgers came over to play in the NCAA tournament. With this young staff, I mean, he has been one of the veterans who has had a great calming presence on everyone. And a workhorse. I mean, he's, he's basically caught every game for Indiana. And, and I love, more than anything else, the 16-6 to six game. And it's really worse than that, where he just continued to block balls and, and take it off the chest. And just, you know, in a game that's completely out of hand, you would think a kid would, uh, you know, lax up a bit. And that's the stuff that scouts look for, the body language and certain things in those situations. And Cerruto was incredible the other day. I mean, he's from Short Hills, New Jersey. He's a New Jersey kid. He's tough, right? Like, that's how they make him there. But more than that, again, I mean, the game it was 16 to 4 at one time, and he's, he's blocking balls up and, you know, hustling after things. And, I mean, just really impressed in that moment for this kid. One and two to count on Waldschmidt. And they check him on Herrera at first. Reisdorf on the mound for Indiana. Trying to keep this a two-run game to give the Hoosiers bat a chance in the ninth. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Laced up the middle. What a catch. Cerny makes the diving grab for the second out. Wow. That was Superman up the middle by Cerny. Had it played well. I mean, he's already shaded toward the back. We've seen a couple of those plays up the middle tonight. Corey's in, double play depth. And ball looks out of reach. I mean, he was down on the ground before he even caught the ball. And that was full extension. Nice job. And for Herrera to get back. How about some of the plays we have seen in the field tonight for both sides? They're laying it out there. I mean, literally. And that's what you do in a game seven, right? Nolan 
McCarthy 0 for 3 tonight. The right fielder. And it appears like Reisdorf slipped on that last pitch. It's going to take its time as he toes the third base side of the rubber. 1 1. Forty pitches for Braden Reisdorf. Second pitcher used tonight. Breaking ball, hammered through the hole. Herrera stops at second. Runners on at first and second with two outs here for Kentucky. Nice swing there by Nola McCarthy. Two guys on in this inning with two outs. And uh, Ray Reisdorf probably needs a little bit of a breather right now. Try to regroup, keep it at two runs. So Jeff Mercer will make the slow walk out to the mound. And Indiana will make the call to the bullpen. With runners on at first and second, two out here in the bottom of the eighth, Kentucky with a 4-2 to lead over Indiana. We step aside and we'll come back to Lexington after this. Let's take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. We go back to the sixth. Three doubles for Kentucky started by Devin Burks. Big inning in the sixth for the Cats. Devin Burks with the leadoff double. Hunter Gillum comes up behind him. Another double in the gap and how about Ryan Waldschmidt the third double of the inning scores four, two runs for Kentucky in the sixth inning they lead it four to two. And that inning was electric for Kentucky this place was absolutely rocking. New pitcher is Ryan Kraft he will check on the runner Herrera at second. Yeah, that's a nice job operating Rise Door, but this is their dude, Ryan Kraft. Two and a half ERA. 36 innings on the year. Grant Smith swings at the first pitch. Foul territory, and with Tibbetts runs out of room. for three tonight. Smith struck out in the fifth in the sixth his last two at bats. And he's behind the count 0 and 2. Todd, all the, they all do at the Wildcats with this two strikes they all tap their chest like all right it's time to choke up and this at bats now for the team. Yeah, they love these meetings, right? I mean, and it, it doesn't have to be to call a bunt or steal or anything else. It's just kind of get your head right. Ryan Kraft on the mound for Indiana, trying to get this third out here in this eighth inning. For the, if you're the Hoosiers, you got 8 9 1 due up in the top of the ninth. The 0 2. Grounded up the middle, right at the second baseman. Cerny steps on the bag for the third out. Here we go. Last chance for Indiana. The Hoosiers season on the line. Kentucky leading it 4 to 2. We go to the ninth. The NCAA Baseball Regionals are presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Kentucky, the last time they hosted a regional in 2017, they won it. They're trying to repeat here in 2023. Tyler Cerny will start off with strike one as Mason Moore looking to shut the door here in the ninth. For Moore on the mound, he has a season high of 67 pitches. Tonight, he's at 65.
Cerny one for three tonight. The one two. Got him swinging one down. Saw Tyler Cerny mad at himself for taking strike two on the fastball, and that's what makes you pull the trigger early. You don't want to do it again. And so for Tyler Cerny, thinking he's going to get that same pitch, makes some more, drops the slider on him. One out. Nine hole hitter Peter Cerudo. He was the hero on Saturday. His three run home run in the seventh gave Indiana the lead. They would go on to win five to three over Kentucky. But Kentucky, they won the rematch last night, 16 to 6. And they're trying to win the rubber match, the most important one, this winner take all game seven. Mason Moore is over his season high in terms of pitches thrown, but he is not slowing down. Pouring in strike after strike. 2-2 two -two count on Cerruto. Yeah, they're making him work. And that's what you want to see, right? So you're down by two. You don't want to just go up there and just wildly swinging at the first couple pitches. And Cerny sees a few. Cerruto now. Lays off the breaking ball. The count is full, and we're just starting to see some activity in the bolt in the bullpen for Kentucky. Biggest pitch of the year for Indiana. I mean, Sudo gets on here. Fly ball, center field. Gray has a beat on it, and Indiana is down to their final out of the season. Two outs for Indiana. Glasser, that is a foul ball. It is fouled at the plate. The game is still going. <laughs> Mason Moore wants to take a look at it. <laughs> the Wildcats on the top step. They can feel a trip to Baton Rouge coming. Grounded to the right side, and it's up the middle. So the game moves on. Philip Glasser comes through with two outs, and the tying run will come to the plate for Indiana. How about this for some drama, Todd? They now have a shot, and even though there's two outs, that's what Indiana needed, is to get somebody on base, split the attention of Mason Moore with a runner on, and the two-hole, Bobby Whalen with a chance. Whalen two for three tonight. An RBI double in the first, and a single in the fifth. Missing outside for ball one. Lays off the breaking ball. It's 2 0. Now he's got a chance. Yeah, you've got to sell out to the fastball right here. Stay within yourself, but stay under control. But you got to cheat a little bit at the front side, get that barrel out. You got a chance. 80th pitch from Mason Moore. Fastball right over the heart. And he took it. Now you're back to not knowing what Mason Moore will throw. He could throw a slider on you here. And when you know something's coming, you got to go.
2-1. Grounded to second. This could be it. The throw to first. And Kentucky will go to the Super Regionals for just the second time in school history. Disappointment for Indiana, but nothing to hang your head on. An incredible season for the Hoosiers ends here in Lexington. The Kentucky Wildcats, the winners here in the Lexington Regional. They hosted in 2017 and won. They host here in 2023. They go back to the Supers. A lot to like about this Indiana Hoosier club and Jeff Mercer. Young team, second in the Big Ten this year. And they've got a bright future ahead, especially with all the experience they got here in Lexington. But Kentucky moves on to Baton Rouge. That's going to be a good one next weekend. With a 4-2 win over Indiana, Kentucky, the champions here in this Lexington Regional, we update our bracket. The 12th seed Kentucky moves on to the Super Regionals and will be hosted in Baton Rouge. They will take on a familiar foe out of the SEC, the LSU Tigers. Yeah, they've already played once this year. They split the first two games, and game three went to LSU in a one-run game, seven to six. But Kentucky's real familiar with Baton Rouge. That was in mid-April. So here we are a month and a half later. Nick Mangione loves it. And here they go. The beginning for Kentucky, it was tied up at two apiece. And in that sixth inning, Devin Burke stepped up with a double. Hunter Gillum drove him in with an RBI double. And Ryan Walshman drove in Gillum with an RBI double. Two runs in the sixth, and Kentucky held on for the 4-2 win. We are joined by the player of the game, the catcher for Kentucky, Devin Burks. My man, you know how to have some fun. You are the life of the party. Tell me about that at bat in the sixth where you started it with a double. Yes, sir, man. Just trying to grind them, you know. Our thing is two, two strikes, you cowboy up, and you ride it. Anything he throws you, you foul it off if it's close, man. We, we just try to put together quality at bats, and, you know, it happened for us. Devin, you're headed to Baton Rouge, man. How are you guys feeling? Yes, sir. Very confident, man. Very confident. You know, we, we've had a run-in with them a, uh, a time before in SEC play, man. It was a well-played game for both sides. So it's going to be it's going to be a, a fun time there. All right, Devin, I'm told your mom's name is Denise. Yes, sir. Denise what do you Woodall. think Miss Denise is probably doing right now? Oh, she's right here. She's videotaping. <laughs> she's right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. So, so she saw you dance at second base. What do we call that dance? Uh, it's called gyrate. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There yes, you go. This regional, you guys have continued to set attendance record. This is the largest crowd you have ever had at Kentucky Proud Park. What do you say to the Kentucky fans for this atmosphere you had tonight? BBN, man, thanks for coming out. Show some love. Thank you guys, man. Y'all are everything, man. Thank you guys. Without y'all, we wouldn't, we, this wouldn't be possible. De <laughs> Devin, <laughs> Devin, a well-fought regional. Your backs were against the wall. How proud are you, are you boys in this deal, in this, in this moment right here? Yes, sir. Bunch of dogs, baby. Bunch of dogs. Bunch of dogs. Let's go. <laughs> Devin, I'm going to let you celebrate with you guys. Congratulations. Good luck in Baton Rouge. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for having me. Devin Let's Burks, go. the catcher, the heart and soul of this Kentucky Wildcats club. <laughs> These guys have fun, and they're going to let the party roll on into Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It is going to be a fight in the Super Regional round against LSU. Oh, yeah, and that's, that's what the Cats are all about, the fight, you know. And, and we talked about the, the greatest stat for the Kentucky. They were top five in all three major categories within the SEC, so they can play. They're a well-rounded group. Nick Mangione knows how to get it done, and they're on to Baton Rouge. That's going to be a really strong Super Regional. For Indiana, their season comes to an end. 
nothing to hang their head on. They lose it four to two tonight. Outstanding performances by so many of the young stars. And Todd, we talked about it. This team is so young, we can expect Indiana to be in this situation for years to come. Well, and you learn the most from your biggest disappointments, right? So for Kentucky, I mean, for, for Indiana, they've got a lot of, of time left. For some of these kids, they'll be there two or three more years. And look out for Indiana in the future. Partner, I have certainly enjoyed this weekend. For my partner, Todd Walker, it has been so much fun calling this regional. I'm John Schriffen signing off tonight. Kentucky wins it 4-2 to two over Indiana. They win the Lexington Regional, advance on to the Super Regional round, will face LSU. Coming up next, the Stanford Regional Final, Stanford against Texas A&M.